When it comes to in-house movements, how do you explain the benefits to customers? Why should a customer pay a premium for a Calibre 1887 that's made by Tag Heuer as against Calibre 16, which is still Swiss made, still has the same level of accuracy and quality? What's the benefit for a customer? This is a, a, a typical Swiss uh, uh, problem. <laughs> the Swiss have created their own problems. Um, why have they started to make a difference between uh, in-house movement and not in-house movement? 20 or 30 years ago, or 50 years ago, <coughs> nobody ever asked, is a watch with an in-house movement or not? Right. <laughs> it was not the problem. And 50 years ago, many brands had a movement coming from either Lemania mm. or Valju mm. or Eta, <laughs> and it was never a problem. The Rolex Daytona with a... And the Rolex yeah, Daytona, a... exactly, mm. with, with, uh, with first with Valju and then later with the with El Primero. The um, and it was never a problem. Never, never, never. Mm. I, 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 uh, Patek had Lemania chronograph, Lemania perpetual. I have uh, Patek Philippe watches that I bought for over one million in the auction, and they have a Lemania mm -hmm. movement. <laughs> so, uh, is that a problem? No, it's not a problem at all. The Swiss have created, nevertheless, this problem by saying in house, in house, in house. And thanks God, the customer will be, will be coming here today and tomorrow and next year. And in 10 years, they will never <laughs> notice mm -hmm. and they will never ask about the difference. Nevertheless, as this has happened now in Switzerland, we said if customer or if journalists start to speak and make a difference and say this is normal movement, oh, this is great, in-house, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily true. Sometimes the in-house are working less good Mm -hmm. than the normal ones. Mm. <laughs> uh, so if now this trend starts, if it has legs, if it goes on, we decided we should have a manufacturer and we should produce our own movement. To which point? Yeah, maybe in 2025, to the point that we produce 90% all in-house. That is for me the solution. Right. At the end is that Okay, maybe 2030. In 2030, that we stop saying in-house mm -hmm. because everything would be or should be in-house. Right. Then we have solved the problem. Yeah. For the time being, we are in between. And you are absolutely right. When you are in between, why should you sell one watch $1,000 more? Because it's your own movement. And the other one $1,000 less because it's a movement you have been buying for 50 years, the customer, the rationality, he doesn't understand. Because if, if you would tell me this, I would ask the, the salesman, are the two performing similar? Right. The salesman would say yes. <clears throat> uh, are the two of the same quality in the service, after sales service? The salesman would say, oh yes, both. I say, well, why should I buy then the right. one that is a thousand more? Right. Finished. Except if I'm a geek, if I am a very uh, collector and yeah. I'm intellectual yeah. and I want to know everything and I want to open the case back and I want to check. Okay, that's different. That's then for the high profile collector. Right. For the normal person, it doesn't make a difference. I guess in a way it was, it was pushed initially by, by Swatch Group uh, because they had the in-house movements. The, in, the movements were theirs. And so perhaps they saw some advantage Yes, in, in emphasizing this this potential importance of in-house because could be yes. their strategic they created course. a little bit of chaos and confusion thank you very much thank for you time. Thank, thank you, you.